Hello everyone and welcome to Royals at the Ranch for December 2nd, 2021. In this Thursday's episode, we're going to talk about how to desensitize our snakes to when we have to do welfare checks, make emergency moves with them, or have to handle them in similar circumstances. What does that mean really? Well, we know from previous videos, and if you have been a follower of my channel or if I've done any coaching with you at all, you know that ideally we want to adhere to Lima principles. That means that we want to use the least intrusive, minimally aversive methods possible when caring for our snakes and when training our snakes. Or we want to adhere to Lyme, the least intrusive, most effective methods of affecting care. But what if there are emergencies, exigent circumstances, or unexpected events that arise and our snakes aren't well trained, or our snakes are asleep, it's the middle of their night when they would normally be resting, or they're in an ecdesis cycle, or maybe they're not feeling well, but something happens and we have to check their welfare, or we have to move them, what do we do then? We should be habituating our snakes to the occasional intrusion, but how do we do that? I'm going to go over that and I'm going to show you some examples. So to help your snake be more accepting and less distressed by necessary intrusions, you can periodically, occasionally, not frequently, but occasionally practice things like lifting their hide to take a quick peek at them, taking them out along with their hide, and viewing them inside their hide, or removing their hide and then removing them briefly and then putting them right back. Let's see some examples of that now. First, let's see what it looks like to do a quick check by lifting the snake's hide. You're just gonna open the enclosure door and you're gonna slowly and quietly lift the hide and take a look at the snake. You're just watching for normal behavior you're checking that they're alive, that they're breathing, that everything looks okay. Then you're gonna put the hide back down slowly and shut the door and you're gonna leave the snake alone. Here's another example of that with fulcrum. I'm removing his water from on top of the hide. I'm gonna lift the hide up, just take a look at him and make sure that he's okay. I'm gonna briefly pause and then I'm gonna set the hide back down, put the water back and shut the door. This is going to show him that this can happen and nothing bad is going to be experienced by him. Now let's look at how we might get them used to being transported along with their hide. So in other words, we're going to lift the snake and their whole hide out of the enclosure and then we're just going to put them back. For snakes that are shy and that we already know are not amenable to handling and aren't going to shift out on their own, I always use hides that have bottoms. This way I can lift the whole hide out with the snake in it. I can check on them or I can put them in a transport tub or in a temporary holding area and then I can put them back. Now let's take a look at what it might look like to practice taking our snake out of their hide and out of their habitat altogether. Remember, this is to be done only occasionally. For instance, with my Royal Python Ammonette, and that's my piebald female, which you've seen in other videos, I've only done that with her once so far in 2021. So while it is something we want to get our snakes used to, it is not something that we want to subject them to all the time. This is something that we want to do very infrequently. I might only do this once or twice a year to practice. Obviously, if it's absolutely necessary because of medical reasons, because of an emergency, then you may have to do this more often. But as just training and habituation, I'm only going to do this with the snakes once or twice a year where I'm going to open their enclosure. I'm going to remove them from their hide and I'm going to remove them from the enclosure and I'm going to either hold them or I'm going to put them into a temporary holding area and then I'm going to return them to their enclosure exactly where I took them from. I'm going to put their hide back on and I'm going to put everything back together. And like I said, this is something we want to practice so that the snakes understand that this is something that occasionally may occur and it's nothing they should be fearful of, but we definitely don't want to do this all the time or it will cause them to be nervous and anxious within their habitat. 
I hope those video examples were helpful, and I want you to remember that this type of desensitization should be done only occasionally. You do not want to make the snake feel uncomfortable, nervous, afraid, or anxious in their home habitat, inside their hide. They should always feel like that's a safe space for them. And you want to make sure that they still feel that way, even after you've worked on some of these habituation to intrusion techniques. So think about if you've ever been in the hospital and the doctors and the nurses or the attendants are constantly checking on you and you feel like you can't really relax, you can't really go to sleep or ever get any rest because you feel like somebody's intruding every few minutes. Or if somebody was constantly intruding into your house, just randomly in the middle of the night and pulling the covers off your bed and asking you to go out and go for a run or jerking you out of bed and forcing you to go somewhere, you would constantly feel anxious and nervous and wonder when that was going to happen next. You just don't feel comfortable like you can ever quite relax because when is that next thing going to happen that pulls you out of bed? You don't want your snake to feel that way. That's why this type of habituation is only done occasionally, very infrequently, and we keep those sessions very brief. So if you check on them too often, they're going to begin to feel distressed because they're always going to be wondering if at any second their space is going to be invaded. You're going to pull their hide off of them or you're going to grab them and touch them without consent and pull them out of their habitat. You want your snake to realize that occasionally someone might check on them to take them out, but nothing bad is going to happen and it's only something that's going to happen very infrequently. It's time for our behavior break and this is part three of behavior modification techniques. So as a review, behavior modification techniques include passive habituation, active habituation, counter conditioning. And we've already talked about passive habituation and active habituation in the two previous Royals at the Ranch videos. So in this video, we are going to talk about counter conditioning and there are two kinds of counter conditioning there's classical counter conditioning and operant counter conditioning so here we go with what those mean classical counter conditioning just means that the snake learns to form positive associations with stimuli you take steps to make sure that they now associate that thing that used to scare them or that thing that they're worried about with things that have positive emotional valence for them. So that aversive stimulus is paired with reinforcing experiences and nothing else. They don't have to do anything to earn a reward or gain reinforcement. They're just gonna get to experience very positive, pleasurable things when they're in the presence of this stimulus that scares them. So the stimulus is paired with a desirable thing, a pleasurable sensation, something that they find reinforcing, like food, freedom, smells, heat, light, maybe a tactile sensation. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's something the snake finds pleasurable, reinforcing, and certainly you wanna make sure that stimuli they were previously afraid of or are afraid of are not paired with any bad experiences. You want them to have only good experiences or at the very least neutral experiences around whatever it is they're worried about. And that is what classical counter conditioning is. So where maybe they used to be afraid of you walking up to their enclosure and opening the door, now they look forward to it because when you walk up to the enclosure and open the door, they get food. Or when you walk up to the enclosure and open the door, they get to come out and exercise and explore and experience things that they enjoy. So that is what it means when I say the snake forms positive associations with stimuli. They're not having to do anything for that. It's just happening when they're in the presence of these things that maybe used to scare them. Now let's talk about operant counter conditioning. So with operant counter conditioning, they're earning a reward or experiencing reinforcement is contingent on them performing a behavior. So basically we're taking a normal training exercise that we would do with them and we're doing it in the presence of that thing that scares them. So the snake is reinforced for a behavior they perform in the presence of a stimulus and by performing a behavior that is 
something they're comfortable with, something they've been trained to do before, something that is routine to them, and getting reinforced for that in the presence of a stimulus that could potentially be aversive or used to scare them or does scare them, they learn to overcome that fear in the presence of that stimulus. So the snake is earning reinforcement contingent upon doing a behavior first, and their normal training is done closer and closer to the previously aversive or potentially aversive stimulus. So in this photo here, I have done a targeting behavior with this snake that he's done many, many times at home and is very, very comfortable with and it's very routine to him. I did it at the veterinarian's office. So I asked him to shift out of his transport tub, follow the target to this station and hold there in position while he was examined and got a microchip implant and some virus testing. And then he got reinforced with a rat and it went very, very well, and that helped him form positive associations with that whole experience of being transported to a strange location because he not only got rewarded or reinforced for being there because he got his food, he also didn't have anything bad happen to him there and no aversive experiences happened. And he performed a behavior that was routine to him and it was something that he was comfortable with. All right, thank you very much for listening to this behavior break. And if you have any questions, you can contact me at behavioreducation.org or behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. Speaking of desensitization, I want you to remember that desensitizing snakes to necessary intrusions should be very infrequent, very short, done only occasionally. And you want to start this procedure once the snake's already used to their enclosure and they feel safe there. You want to do this when your snake is already mostly comfortable and relaxed in their habitat and having you nearby. And you absolutely do not want to bother them too often or they will become generally worried and anxious all the time. So while we do want to get the snakes used to the occasional intrusion, because emergencies happen, what if my dogs are playing and they crash into one of the snake enclosures and break the glass? Okay, I'm going to have to take the snake out of there and I'm going to have to put them in something else temporarily. What if the snake has to go to the vet? What if we have to evacuate? What if the snake isn't feeling well, or I'm worried that they're not feeling well and I need to check on their welfare? So there are times when we are going to have to reach into the enclosure and get our snake out. Even if they're trained to voluntarily shift out, there are gonna be times when we may not be able to wait for them to be awake and alert and ready to do that behavior. We may have to just go in there and check on them or go in there and get them out. We want them to understand that that could happen occasionally and that it shouldn't scare them, but we don't want them to think it's something that could happen at any second because then that, that's just going to produce a, a totally nervous animal that's always worried about when their space is going to be invaded and we don't want to cause that. I have removed some of my snakes completely from their habitat, maybe only once a year or twice a year just to make sure they know it's something that could happen, but it's not something that's gonna happen all the time. I do check on them periodically by lifting their habitat up and just making sure they're alive, especially when they're going through a shed cycle. But I still don't do that every day. I just do it occasionally when I haven't seen them in a while or when I think perhaps something might be wrong or they're in a shed cycle, I just wanna make sure they're okay. So please, please remember that this kind of desensitization to the occasional intrusion is something that you work on intermittently and not very often. And like I said, I've totally taken Aminette out of her enclosure only once this year and we're already in December. So please don't be doing this every day or you're going to create an anxious animal, a nervous animal that becomes generally fearful all the time. I know you're ready for this segment. Here we go with everybody's favorite, Royals in Your Homes.
If you have any questions for me about anything we talked about in this or other episodes, please feel free to contact me via Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Patreon, or you can visit me on my website at behavioreducation.org or via email at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. Here are some helpful resources if you want to learn more about animal training and behavior and specifically about habituation, desensitization, and counter conditioning. These are definitely resources that I recommend and I will also put these in the video description on YouTube. Until next time, everybody please remember to always be kind and love your animals.